uh, mean it very much indeed. Can I just pay my respects to uh, former and current Indigenous leaders, past and present, and do so particularly in the knowledge that uh, last week we lost one of the most profound Indigenous men ever. Uh, and Gurubul sadly died at the young age of 46, and he had a voice that to me resonated like Edith Piaf, but those of you who are old enough or more experienced enough to remember Edith Piaf, uh, or uh, Paul Robeson. So our Indigenous community are to be very, very special, and I regret that as a community we haven't yet worked out a way of recognising them in the way they should be recognised, because they could easily be the oldest people on earth, they're very, very special, they're so much part of our culture and art and everything else. I hope in the years to come we will find a more generous way of recognising them. Uh, Mr Mayor, Deputy Mayor, Councillors, Councillors past, and Mr Parliament past, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, first, thank you very much for the invitation to come up here when I got it. Normally I, at this stage of my life, send my regrets. Uh, but on this occasion, because I remember so fondly what happened 20 years ago, I did want to accept them to be with you. And partly that was because I felt I owed you a debt. I well remember when Bill was leading the charge for this facility to be built. And it was against a great deal of local opposition. They might remember it, others might remember it. And it reinforces in my mind that in life you don't achieve a thing if you're only worried about where you start. Life is about what you deliver. It's about outcomes. It's not where you start, it's where you finish. And here we are 20 years later, after all of that discussion, debate, venom that existed from some of the time, we have a facility that has said to serve this community well for over well just on 20 years today. And that is a wonderful example of what we can do as a community when we make the right decisions for the right reasons and we have as our foremost consideration the interests of the community. And this is now a wonderful precinct. I've been coming back to Shepparton intermittently over the last 20 years. I was up here most recently working with a group of people who were involved in suicide prevention. Uh, and to come here today with such extraordinarily good weather. I don't know what you're complaining about cold. <laughs> they always tell me Shepherd is so much better than anywhere else. But to look across the lake, which is now a wonderful asset to the city for this facility, is just encouraging. You must feel uplifted to believe that your local administrators with assistance from outside, A, had the vision, secondly, had the nous, uh, and thirdly, uh, the courage to see through what they talked about 21 years ago that delivered this project. It's not only a facility, an asset for the community, it's more importantly an asset for those who use it. And there will now be generations of people who have used it, and there will be generations who will use it in the future. And as you would all realise, having just given up my leadership of Beyond Blue, I'm absolutely certain that the key to good health and long life is being physically and mentally active for as long as you can. And we go through this in spurts. So as a young person, you're terribly active at school, you play sports, and you might then continue to do so, and then based on my own experience, you get married, which of course is a wonderful <laughs> institution. And then you have children, which is equally wonderful, but it means your time for sport declines. And what normally happens is you then put on uh, a bit of girth, Mr. Mayor, that you were referring to. <laughs> and then as you get a bit more advanced in years and you get a bit more time on your hand, you try and re-correct the laziness of the years that went before and get your body back into a, a better condition. And that takes a lot of doing. Very, very difficult. So these photographs that were 20, 20 years ago when I was a, a very young soldier, as a result of this opening, the good burgers at the time very generously gave me a tracksuit, which was made out of parachute silk. <laughs> and it was in your colour, so it was the green, the blue and the white. And it was the most wonderful outfit. And I used to wear it. 
regularly because in those days when I was a lot fitter, I used to run from my home in Surrey Hills at least three days a week into my office at Parliament House, which was a distance of three point, sorry, 12.3 kilometres. And I used to do that to stay fit, but I was covered in Shepherd. So every time I put it on, I thought of this facility and that opening. I've got to say, there was probably a downside looking back to that experience because I used to run on the pavements. My legs are now shattered. My feet are gone. So too is the track suit. <laughs> but then again, I no longer have any use for it. So that is not. But it was, you know, you do a lot of things in parliamentary life and parliamentary service. And there's, it's a wonderful thing to do things out of your own environment. So for me, the city was the environment. So every time I had the opportunity to go out of Melbourne, it was always good. To be associated with projects that are intrinsically valuable because it's about a person's health, mental and physical. And if there's ever an example of that, it's Pam, who looks better than probably most of us here today. The importance of good health. I well remember the first thing I opened as a Member of Parliament, I was elected in 1976. So not only is that a long time ago, it was last century, as was the opening of this facility. But in my own local municipality, I was asked to open a toilet block <laughs> in Haverwell, in the car park. It was a state-of-the-art toilet block, men and women. I was very proud. My name was on the plaque <laughs> for opening, not necessarily for using the toilet. <laughs> I was so proud of it. And then three years ago, they pulled it down. And I felt as though I was very publicly being consigned <laughs> to another place. So I'm very glad this place is still here. <laughs> and I'm very, very pleased that it is going to be around for a long time. One of the challenges, as people will well understand, in local government is to make sure, and in government, is to make sure that you continue to maintain your assets. So often, when we came to government in 92, we found a whole lot of our fundamental major buildings and facilities run down because governments hadn't spent time maintaining them, etc. And when you get around to doing so, you either have to wipe the building off or the cost of renovating is a lot more expensive. <coughs> this building, from what I'm observing, and I think we're going to have a walk around, is obviously exceedingly well maintained. So when councils look at their assets, they've got to understand clearly for the ratepayers what assets should the community be paying for, what should be provided by private enterprise or whatever, and those you decide to keep, you maintain and you maintain them. And then, of course, you've got to address the question, how can we keep improving them to meet changes in our community? Because the greatest thing I've noticed in my short life, and I intend to live for many, many years to come, is the rate of change. I've never seen anything like it as fast as it is today. You know, when I was a young man, speaking to some of those uh, younger members of the community, we used to think that referring back to the invention of the motor vehicle and the aeroplane were major changes. I was a young boy when television first came to Australia in 1956 for the Olympic Games and we had the first coloured television set in Australia because my father put blue cellophane on the top of the screen, <laughs> yellow in the middle and green on the bottom. <laughs> which was all right until you saw a presenter there who was only one face occupying the whole screen. But think of what's happened over the last 20 years. Think of what's happened over the last 10 years. All the technology that we use, which my father would say, just proves that something else is going to go wrong as opposed to the old systems of the panic. So councils, governments, have got to keep reinventing themselves to make sure that they're relevant not only to preserve the things that are still relevant, but to position the community for the future. And going back to your CEO's comments about the times in the 90s when we made the changes of local government, they've tried to do it in 
Queensland, not nearly as successfully. They've tried to do it in Western Australia and fouled it up. They've just tried to do it in New South Wales and fouled it up. They're talking about it in Tasmania, where we have a population of 500,000 and 29 councils. 29 councils for 500,000 people, and they're not doing it. So what we did here, over 20 years ago, has stood the test of time, and again, you've got to keep questioning. Now, some of it, outside management, competitiveness was good, I think, at the time, because I don't like anyone to get away with anything, Peter. I think at the time, rate capping was good. So, <laughs> different to now, because different circumstances, but then it focused the administrator's attention on what you described as greater efficiency. And everything we do, whether at home, whether at work, whether at council, whether at this facility, should all be about efficiency. How can we do what we're doing as efficiently as possible? And that's being made increasingly difficult because of some of the new elements that are coming into our lives very quickly, such as the increased cost of power, electricity, gas, etc., etc. So for me, it's a great pleasure to be with you. Uh, it's a great pleasure to know that something not only has survived, but it's grown. And it's a great pleasure to know that so many people in this area, in this region, have got benefit from this particular facility. The important thing is to make sure that this is not seen as anything more than a tick-off point in time and that the facility will continue to grow and service this population. So it's a great pleasure that I'm up here today. I would wish you all good health, uh, both physically and mentally, knowing that long life is going to be better guaranteed if you're physically and mentally active. Thank you. Have a good day.